Okay, welcome to the Light and Dark Reactions Notes. This should look very familiar. It's all in your lab notebooks. It's an overview of the light reactions and our dark reactions. Our light reactions are also known as light dependent reactions, and the point of these are to harvest light energy to make ATP and that other molecule that's super important to storing energy, NADPH. So our light reactions, we're capturing all of our energy, and we're using this light energy to excite electrons in a photosystem too, causing water molecules to split in half. When we're splitting water molecules, we're getting two different products. We are releasing oxygen, which is a waste product, and we're also getting electrons in the form of hydrogen molecules. These hydrogen molecules are going to travel along to the, something called the electron transport chain. Excited electrons move from the photosystem 2 to the electron transport chain, which is located in the thylakoid membrane. This, the electron transport chain, and also known as ETC, is made up of proteins and a pump. The pump takes energy from the electrons and produces ATP and NADPH. So this is what it looks like. This is our photosystem 2. It's a type of protein that's embedded in our thylakoid membrane. So water is going to be split when light hits this, and the electrons are going to travel along these proteins until they reach these pumps, which produce our NADPH and our ATP. This is what we really need to know, though. We need to know our reactants and our products. Reactants are our ADP, NADP+, and H2O. The water molecule is important to getting our electrons, and these are the uncharged versions of our molecules that we are storing energy in. So as we're storing this energy, we're creating ATP and NADPH, and we're also producing oxygen as a waste product. So here we go again. We have our light reactions that we just covered. Light's coming in. It's located in our thylakoid. We're taking in water and we're splitting it. We're releasing the oxygen into the atmosphere. And we are charging up these NADP and ADP molecules so we have usable forms of ATP and NADPH. The second part, or phase two, of photosynthesis are known as the light independent reactions or the dark reactions. And we're using up all the ATP and NADPH that we just produced in our light reactions to make glucose. Glucose is a sugar that the plants need to survive. It's their food product. And this is what it looks like. We use the yellow beads in class to represent our Calvin cycle. Uh, so the Calvin cycle uses the energy produced from our light reactions to store it as glucose. And this occurs into the stroma. Phase 1 was in the thylakoid membrane. All that moves out into our stroma now. Uh, we are require the ATP and the NADPH that we just made. And we also need to get CO2. How do we get CO2 into our leaves? We're using those stomata pores that open with the guard cells. Here's another chart that shows the reactants and the products of the Calvin cycle. Our reactants are the energy molecules that store the energy we need, like the ATP, the NADPH, and the carbon dioxide that we're taking in through our stomata. We're producing ADP once we use up our energy, but we can reuse this because we can recharge it like a battery. And NADPH is the same way. Our final product that we're shooting for is glucose that the plant can use. Here it is again. Again, I won't ask you step by step. You just need to know our reactants and our products. Okay, so we we see the ATP and NADPH being recharged and the energy used up in our dark reactions. Our dark reactions also require the CO2 that comes in, and glucose is our product made. There are a couple different ways to do photosynthesis, however. C3 plants are what we think about when we live in the Midwest. A lot of them are C3 when we go outside, especially the big trees that we see. We use photosynthesis using three carbon compounds. So if we go back up to this slide, this is what I'm talking about. These molecules leveled are labeled PGA. These are three carbon molecules. C3 plants enjoy moderate environments, and they need only a little bit of sunlight. They do require lots and lots and lots of water, though. Some really common examples, especially in Kansas, wheat, 
we also need rice, which grows in like these uh, fields that are real boggy. And we also have potatoes, dandelions, and most trees that are found around this area. C4 plants are different because they use four carbon compounds. So C3 uses these three carbon compounds. C4 plants would have another carbon attached to them. Uh, uh, C4 plants are minimize water loss by closing their stomata on really hot days. Remember, I brought in the one plant that looks like a almost a tropical tree that grows mostly in like desert areas like Arizona and the southwest United States. It can survive these environments by having real thin leaves that minimize the amount of sunlight it's taking in and they're going to save on the water loss this way by closing their stomata. So we know that they can survive arid environments where there's not a lot of water and hot environments. Corn is a really good example. It grows a lot during the summer, especially in this region. And sugarcane, which is, and sorghum are both really big crops down in the south. Where it's going to be really hot down there for a lot of parts of the year. So we need plants that can survive these environments. Also prairie grasses. If you go out into more like western Kansas, you'll see lots of them. And these are all lovely C4 plants. The final type is called cam plants. Cam plants are what we think of when most of the plants living in the desert. They're very, very, very efficient at conserving water. So we can live in really stressful environments like deserts and salt, marsh salt marshes. And they can do this by opening their stomata at night. These are the only plants that do that. C3, C4, they're going to be open during the day when the light's out. When we are opening our stomata at the night, we can take in that CO2 and we can store it in our leaves. And then during the day, we run the Calvin cycle to use it to turn it into glucose. Some examples you're probably really familiar with are pineapple and cacti and orchids.